So good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to uh, Sri Akhilandeshwari Women's College, uh, the national webinar organized by the Department of uh, English. This is a series of webinar uh, organized by Sri Akhilandeshwari Women's College. So inviting various resource persons from uh, different fraternity. And today morning we had a Department of uh, Chemistry's international uh, webinar. And today we're going to have uh, an interesting session and interesting topic as, as well. It's uh, the topic on. Uh, detective fiction i think most of you uh, have a very good interest towards detective uh, fiction so i think we have a very good super resource person dr p suresh kumar from assistant professor of english bishop paper uh, college trichy has been joining with us as a resource person today and uh, i request uh, dr suguna the head of uh, department of english to uh, give welcome address good morning to all it gives me an immense pleasure to express my gratitude to our chairman Lion to B. Muniratnam, our secretary. Lion engineer to M. Ramanan, our former syndicate member, Thrillur University Vellur, and our beloved principal, Dr. S. Maithili, for giving us this opportunity to conduct this Silver Jubilee webinar program on behalf of English department. During this quarantine period, they have given us an opportunity to learn and know about many academic informations and also about experts who are unknown to us. In this way, today we have an young literary expert, Dr. P. Suresh Kumar, Assistant Professor of English, Bishop Weber College, Trichy. To say a few words of Dr. Suresh, he hails from Trichy. He had completed his PhD in 2019 at the Bhadidasan University. He has, a, he has completed both set and net in 2016 and 18 simultaneously. Right from UG to PhD, he is a student of Jamal Muhammad College, Trichy. His field of interest is detective fiction, Shakespeare, language and linguistics, contemporary theory, and historical novels. He has published and presented many articles in various journals and also with ISBN certificates. He served as a chairperson for national conference held at Sanskrit College, Tirpur during 2019. He, a pride goes to him as he is a person who has been responsible to start PG courses in MIT Trichy. He, he, he continuously organizes net coaching classes and also handles classes for MBA organized by time management. To say a few words of his experience, he served as an assistant professor and HOD of English department in MIT Trichy from 2011 to May 2019. At present, he is serving as an assistant professor in Bishop Weber College Trichy. Today he is here with us for this national webinar conference to share his ideas on Detective fiction. Detective fiction is a subgenre of crime fiction and mystery fiction, which has taken its genre from mid 19th century and is still in the same position even today. And Professor Suresh Kumar is with us to share his ideas on detective fiction and, and as it is trending in the, in the interest of many young people. I welcome you, Mr. Suresh Kumar. And on behalf of our management and my principal, I extend my warm welcome. To the national webinar conference i also extend my warm welcome to all my colleagues and students and also to the professors and faculty members and students of various colleges who are sharing with me at this session i welcome one and all thank you to everyone thank you so much uh, dr subhana the head of the department of english uh, sri aglandesh women's college for the warm introduction and also it's been uh, thanks for creating the excitement uh, of uh, towards the presentation also so detective uh, fiction uh, an overview from uh, dr uh, suresh kumar who's having uh, uh, wise knowledge and expertise on this uh, chosen topic i request uh, dr suresh kumar to uh, take over the session all right uh, first of all thank you for letting me talk on this topic because we don't get the opportunity to uh, speak in this topic and thank you uh, hod ma'am for your kind words I don't think I deserve that all. Fine. But the beginning. Crime is common, whereas logic is rare. It is a quotation from Sherlock Holmes in the story, The Adventure of the Beryl Coronet, written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. What is detective fiction? See, the title itself suggests that I'm not going to uh, tell you what is detective fiction, okay? Because I cannot. 
the that is the truth i cannot uh, explain detective fiction within a span of one and a half hours no i cannot do that so that is why i given the topic detective fiction and overview not a view but an overview of detective fiction because it it spans the very globe that is the problem as uh, the hod while she was talking she mentioned that it started with the 19th century we all know that it started with 19th century as a genre but the origins are far distant it started with time immemorial we do not know which time it started it started from the beginning from the early man okay the biblical time when literature was there detective fiction was there and remember when i use the word detective fiction okay there are many sub genres okay in detective fiction we call it crime thriller we call it uh, 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 tech fi okay there are lots of um, terms to it i'm putting it in a in a nutshell i'm putting it in a in a very basic view because experts will know that detective fiction has subtle differences from a crime fiction crime narrat uh, narratology okay i'm just using this word detective fiction so that it en encompasses everything so that we understand better okay now the first slide which shows that the crime fiction's origins okay you might see there are two pictures which uh, one is the murder of uh, abel by cain and the next one is uh, uh, you know it's it's hercules okay as i told you detective fiction started very earlier even with the start of man cain and abel okay they are the sons of adam and eve okay if i'm not if i'm not wrong then they are the sons of adam and eve cain and abel cain is a farmer whereas abel is a shepherd he, both of them offer their sacrifices to god but the god favors uh, abel sacrifice whether he does not uh, uh favor cain sacrifice he gets angry and he kills his brother in the story okay this story even from the beginning we understand that there is uh, cain does not explicitly say that he is the one who murdered his brother so there the, the sense of quest the question interrogation who killed him a detective story starts with that okay there is there will be a crime okay of any sort it might be uh, it might be a murder it might be robbery it might be a theft it might be blackmail okay anything mistaken identity anything detective story unravels what is hidden what is the mystery there okay the mystery is unraveled in a detective story so cain and abel story becomes the the first of those stories if you take a bible as the first literature then this becomes the first story there are lo lots of uh, examples for origins i'm just giving you a very few I'm giving you here a very few because i cannot tell you all we don't have the time for that no i'm i'm just going to to pre uh, biblical stories that is uh, the story of hercules okay story of hercules okay you 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 understand that there is a thief his name is cacus this guy people think that he is a fire breathing uh, there is a dragon there but actually he is a man and uh, you know the the uh, the hero he finds it out by throwing ashes on the floor okay you will have footprints right the evidence and the thief also forges the evidence so this is 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 the origins of the story you understand the the, the story origins the, that is the detective story story origins there so it is very very earlier it is not it it does not start with the 19th century or 18th century it starts with the earlier literature itself if you look at the slide where we have oedipus rex the the uh, the slide which is shown there oedipus rex again we all know the story of oedipus rex there are three books okay oedipus at uh, i mean uh, colonus oedipus at, oedipus rex and the third is antigone all these three were written by sophocles the second one okay that is what we have the surviving literature is the second one and the antigone that is oedipus rex we find that a murder is committed okay the oracle says that the land is devastated because of the murder of the king okay and uh, you you know that oedipus is the is the person who finds what happened in his life 
and when he finds using the uh, tiresias using tiresias as the with as a help he gets to know that he is the one who has killed his father fulfilling the oracle obviously and has married the mother you know what happens after that he gouges his eyes out jacosta commits suicide so it it, it is the uh, it is a crime of incest and patricide okay so oedipus rex is also an example for earlier uh, detective fiction and the the next uh, i mean the picture shows uh, the not this the earlier one the next picture i said okay the picture shows that uh, uh, the 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 architecture is 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 uh, arabian right um, i put it because it it symbolizes the uh, arabian nights 1001 nights sharazade the the queen tells the story daily so that she escapes uh, being beheaded and in that you have uh, the story of three apples okay there uh, a minister is there his name is jafar he has to find out uh what happened that is a murder committed okay uh, a, a body is mutilated and is kept in a chest okay uh, a sea chest so he has to find out who is the murderer so as i told you people detective fiction is way back it started way back every country has its own detective story chinese have their own detective story india we have detective stories and uh, africa Uh, Australia. Every country have their own detective stories. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, as we are looking at uh, English uh, literature, detective fiction in English literature, for that matter, it started. Okay, not just in English. In every literature, it starts with the revenge tragedy. There are lots of parallels to crime fiction and revenge tragedy. I have given it there. See the parallels. The first. Per- parallel is expulsion expulsion in a revenge tragedy means uh, what happened for example if you take up hamlet you know that the, in the beginning of the story we find that uh, the the character the king hamlet the father hamlet is dead that is expulsion the expulsion is the situation leading up to investigation the murder or robbery anything we can parallel that to crime fiction and the second one is uh, anticipation so we anticipate the move of what happens what the uh, revenger should do so here the investigator anticipates the move of the person who has committed the crime and confrontation the confrontation be- be- between the revenger and uh, the person he has to revenge okay the the, the villain investigator and the criminal and partial execution we have this point here partial execution because if you look at hamlet the uh, or any other revenge tragedy they'll have a plan to get the uh, criminal but what happens is that the plan will be thwarted in the middle that is why we put it as partial execution again in an in- investigation okay the detective goes nearly to uh, to catch the criminal but the plan is thwarted so that is how it becomes a partial execution and then of course the final success okay the crime is unraveled the the perpetrator or the criminal is brought to justice so we have a parallel with crime fiction and the revenge tragedy next slide now as i told you there was this parallels what happened for the expansion there are three major figures which are very very important for the expansion of uh, detective fiction the first one is uh, eugene francois widock okay the second is monsieur leacock and the third is edgar allan poe's stories let's look at the first one it's memoirs of widock eugene francois widock is a criminal actual he is an actual he is not fictional he is an actual person he was a criminal okay from his young age he was called the wild boar he was called the wild man okay he was a very arrogant and rowdy fellow and he was a criminal and later on his, in his life he, the criminal became a criminalist he studied criminology that is he became someone who catches the criminals surete or the safety in french is the first private police force see we do not the world did not have a private police force or the police force for that matter earlier with uh, vidoc that is eugene francois vidoc he was the one who founded 
the police force in france from france we get to um, go to um, london america pink america it is a pinkerton's detective agency in london it is bow street runners interestingly enough we have a lot a lot in common with the bow street runners because henry fielding the author of shamil or tom jones okay mm, he was the one who was uh, insightful in creating this uh, bow street runners okay himself and his uh, half brother sir john fielding okay they were magistrates that time they were the ones who, who were responsible for creating the police force and vidoc is responsible for creating the police force earlier so he is the pioneer of uh, all these police force we have now uh, scotland yard for that matter okay so vidoc he has written a lot of memoirs memoirs where he he looks into the mind of the criminals the narratives of the criminals and his investigation and the second one is monsieur leacock leacock again is is not leacock is not uh, i mean um, uh, real he is fictional leacock is a is a is a symbolism of vidoc he was written by emil garberio garberio has has created this uh, character leacock who is a criminal who turns into a criminalist again this influence was taken from vidoc okay and all these people okay that is leacock or uh, vidoc all these people are very good in disguise they are very good in taking the criminal minds so they got very very popular that is how the detective fiction it started expanding little by little but we have to owe it to edgar allan poe the father of detective stories the, there is a father for detective novels also because it is it is not edgar allan poe per se he has started writing but the, uh, the father of father of a uh, detective novel is wilkie collins with the moonstone okay the moonstone refers to our diamond indian diamond kohinoor diamond what happened to that diamond okay it's a very fascinating story and you'll find that there is a um, i mean the hero is the villain okay the, the, the concept of split personality or uh, sleepwalking okay he has he has incorporated that earlier itself okay there is nothing new under the sun as they say now let's take up edgar allan poe the murder is in the in the in the room of the adventure of mary roger every story or the purloin letter for that matter every story you will have a detective called august c dupin an eccentric brilliant okay and a suave detective who uh, will go to any lens to find out what happened his acumen the power of uh, knowledge and how he he um, takes up clues from very small details and derives that conclusions that gave an insight as to how a detective should be the character of the detective see i did my phd on on the character of the detective not the narration nothing else i just did the my phd on the character and that to one character sherlock holmes because earlier to sherlock holmes okay we have this character that is pose agassi dupin Holmes is a embodiment of Agassiz Dupin, but after we have Holmes, that is Sherlock Holmes, everything changes. Every detective is modeled on him, or he is not modeled on him. Whatever it is, there is a fleeting image of Sherlock Holmes in every detective. Okay, so Edgar Allan Poe is very important when it comes to the genre of detective literature. Next slide, please. Now. we move on to the main uh, character we move into the main person who uh, bought what what all of this out that is sherlock holmes okay see with the beginning of uh, conan doyle's writing in 1887 that is in beaton's christmas annual he wrote this uh, story called the study in scarlet he introduced this detective sherlock holmes okay from then on he has been a phenomenon there are the people are following him even even um, till date i i need not have to say that because we have lots of tv serials we have lots of movies on sherlock holmes and he is the character who holds the guinness record uh, because more than 280 actors have portrayed sherlock holmes so far and there are about 25000 adaptations just on this character okay so not just he that is not just uh, holmes was important his biography important baker street irregulars became important the 
the Scotland Yard inspector, Lestrade or Lestrade as they call him, he became important. The place became important. That is 221B Baker Street. See, that is, that is no actual place uh, called 221B because he is a fictional detective. But they have made it a point that the 221B in Baker Street becomes a museum. And this guy, who is a fictional detective, mind you, is getting mails even today. See, I'm just telling you the impact of the character on the society, on the, on the reading public of detective literature. See, Conan Doyle became fed up one time with the character. He wanted to kill him off. Okay, so he what he did was he killed Holmes uh, in his in the in the hands of the arch enemy that is uh, nemesis uh, Professor James Moriarty in the um, adventure of the final problem. But he had to resurrect Holmes because people started wearing uh, black ribbons as a, as a sign of mourning. See the subs. Description for Strand magazine got very poor. People did not want to buy the magazine at all because it did not feature the famous hero. And people were in mourning. So many years later, when he had the prospect of another story, he wanted to resurrect Holmes from the watery grave. See, it's easy because he had left a lot of loopholes. He said that Holmes uh, did not die. He just fell into the water, but he did not die. And he went to Tibet, went to uh, America, and he came back to London. The story was acceptable. People were in, uh, overwhelmed. They were they enjoyed the return of the hero. So, what makes this character so, uh, I mean, so important, so brilliant, is that even in the first uh, novel, okay, that is uh, Study in Car Scarlet, Colonel Doyle himself gives a lot of traits to Sherlock Holmes. Okay, this guy has uh, a, a greater, a wide variety of knowledge. He knows about plants, botany. His knowledge of botany was great. He knows more about poisons. He knows uh, boxing. He knows sword fighting. He knows uh, about chemicals. He knows about British law. He knows about all the uh, topographical play, uh, things. He knows about the geography of the place. Okay. He knows which mud will be there and will be will be in which place. He can place. Okay. He can diagnose. His this quality came from. Uh, a lot of inspiration because Conan Doyle was a physician because his practice was not good. He, he took up writing good for him. Okay. So this guy he is, is his mentor. That is Dr. Joseph Bell was like, was like Sherlock Holmes. Okay. He could place or he could diagnose the person's uh, ailments by just by looking at them. So this gave him an inspiration. And of course, as I told you, the earlier detectives also was an inspiration, especially Agassi Dupin of Edgar Allan Poe. So Holmes is considered to be eccentric. He's considered to be bohemian. Remember, bohemianism is something which is looked clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning and he'll be playing. <laughs> okay, he'd smoke at ungodly hours. He'll, he, sometimes he does not eat at all. Sometimes he does not speak at all. He'll be uh, vacant. Okay, he'll be sleeping on his sofa, vacant. And every actor who has did this role, did the role of Sherlock Holmes, try to incorporate the characterization which is laid out by Conan Doyle. It was so fascinating. Now, Conan Doyle has written 56 short stories and four novels featuring Holmes. So that made him so much of a phenomenon that we have a cult following for Sherlock Holmes. So with Sherlock Holmes, the detective fiction took a different turn. It became so popular. It was the bestseller of the time. Okay. So remember, Holmes's uh, impact on detective literature can never be forgotten. And so is the authors. That is Sir Arthur Ignatius Conan Doyle. Fine. Next slide. Now, Moving on to the golden age of detective fiction. With the end of the uh, writings of Sherlock Holmes by uh, author Conan Doyle, remember, the writings have not stopped. There are so many writers who have taken up Holmes' stories and they are writing even today. Anthony Horowitz has uh, written uh, The House of Silk and he has been commissioned to write the other novels also. Okay, so remember, the writings has not stopped. Even people write um, today also. But look at uh, these writers. 
see detective fiction is was predominated by lady writers okay that is starting with uh, agatha christie uh, the, the the dame agatha christie i should say uh, if it was sherlock holmes this side or arthur conan doyle this side then we have to put agatha christie on the other side she is far better the golden age of detective fiction started exploring new ideologies and the next person is uh, that is dorothy l slayers now agatha christie okay we we know that she has written some uh, uh, we are, we know that she has written novels on uh, hercule poirot another famous fictional detective she has written some 66 detective uh, novels and 14 short story collections and she has she is the one who created a lot of detective characters also one is uh, hercule poirot the belgian detective the other is uh, i believe it's ah uh, miss Mar- marple tommy and tuppence all these people uh, parker payne okay all these people they created a new detective of their own see anybody can create a detective of their own keeping the traits in mind or you can you can negate the traits in mind but you can create a detective okay i'll tell you what happened later but for now look at the golden age the golden age is the age of christie there were so many writers not just christie or uh, dorothy l slayers dorothy l slayers the detective was uh, uh, lord peter wimsley okay not just her she also wrote uh, godi knight she is considered to be the first women uh, feminist novel uh, mystery novel writer okay first feminist or or first women feminist mystery novel writer dorothy l slayers the novel is godi knight and uh, she also writes about world war 1 trauma okay and um, the other no- other examples of dorothy l slayers are whose body cloud of witness unnatural death okay now other writers were also Uh, writing at that time that is why it is called the golden age for example we have marjorie allingham josephine tay uh, josephine tay is a is a great writer of detective fiction gk chesterton anthony berkeley gk chesterton is famous for uh, on running after one's hat but he is also famous for father brown stories okay and uh, see not just in english many uh, places many writers uh, from all over the globe were writing in french it was jules maigret and in americas it was uh, van dyne ellery queen earl stern stanley gardner uh, john dickson car remember john dickson car has collaborated with adrian conan doyle that is arthur conan doyle's son and he has written exploits of sherlock holmes he has brought out sherlock holmes stories you know he wanted to be like his father he even sat in the same desk where arthur conan doyle wrote and he wrote sherlock holmes stories okay so remember the impact as i was telling see detective fiction will have will always have the impact of homes even till the end okay even uh, till the present age now looking at golden age all these writers were coming up okay so that time it was considered to be pulp okay some people consider detective fa- fiction to be pulp even now but it is not so when you consider uh, the other writers as see when when we can get um, nobel prize for songs how can you consider detective fiction as pulp fiction no you cannot do that because that is why people don't go for go in for that but many people read that but they don't research on that now the golden age brought out the possibilities of expansion even more okay uh, next slide please now this golden age okay gave rise to another uh, genre of detective fiction which is called uh, hard boiled detective fiction remember the exponents were pd james and raymond chandler lots of people wrote but pioneers can be called uh, can be pd james and raymond chandler what is this hard boiled see there are soft boiled detective fiction and hard boiled detective fiction soft boiled detective fiction was the earlier stages that is the golden age of detective fiction whereas hard boiled was was gritty was dark there will be a lot of violence in those stories that is also a detective story but there will be a lots of violence gunslinger uh, uh, plots see the hero or the detective will fight organized crime you all remember the prohibition in america right the liquor prohibition in america which was brought out in this movie untouchables very beautifully uh, kevin costner sean connery all those people good actors uh, act in those movie see that is what an hard boiled detective fiction is about he, the hero will fight crime 
okay fight fight crime in the sense uh, the organized crime so he he'll have to suffer okay the violence the assault okay he'll have to suffer now he'll be fighting against a corrupt legal system okay that that gave rise to a lot of uh, subgenres one subgenre is is called the noir fiction noir is uh, black noir means in in french it means black the noir fiction has lots of similarities with the hard boiled detective fiction but there is one uh, predominant uh, i mean uh, uh, separation is that the noir fiction again it it uh, the protagonist will fight crime but the protagonists are victimized there will be tragedy in the life of the protagonist okay there will be failures in the life of protagonists okay so hard boiled detective fiction okay as we are seeing uh, we will have uh, anti heroes for heroes okay the, the the genre of anti hero fiction for example we have philip marlow we have mike hammer we have the continental op uh, louis archer the very famous uh, Sp sam spade samuel spade for who uh, who came who come comes in the movie or or the novels um, black mask and uh, the maltese falcon okay all these uh, heroes you'll find that they are self centered not like sherlock holmes the victorian gentleman the upholder of law no they want to give justice but in their own way so this gave rise to a lot of gunslinger stories okay the hard boiled detective fiction uh, there are so many exp exponents we have seen about uh, pd james raymond chandler but a very important person is dashil ham hamet and james m kane okay so this hard boiled detective fiction gave rise to a lot of genres one is noir uh, fiction and next slide please okay the other uh, is conspiracy theories okay there are lots of conspiracy uh, theories uh, due to hard boiled uh, detective fiction for example um, the investigation for example who killed whom who was the who is the who assassinated uh, J jfk you, you you understand so this guys this this gave rise to a lot of subgenres in the detective fiction one such subgenre is police procedurals James L Roy okay uh, LA confidential we all know that LA confidential and black, uh, black dahlia here you will find that the detective is a policeman okay we we started with police uh, uh, detectives right that is monsieur uh, leacock and the and the actual uh, real life uh, detective uh, vidoc uh, pinkerton detective agency bow street runners remember in england there came a journal called the newgate calendar okay it it was called the prison diaries you you'll have the uh, the records of the criminals or the records of the investigators so that gave out a lot of police procedurals in england now police procedurals were very famous with uh, the american uh, united states of america so we, you have new york pd you have san francisco pd you have la pd okay you have uh, uh, any any place any county will have a police department of its own and they have pride in that department so police procedurals will will also fight crime drug trafficking women trafficking uh, kidnapping serial killing everything comes into play so with this police procedurals you you find another subgenre in police procedurals that is called the precinct novels one one thing which is very famous is 87th precinct novels where you find that there is a lot of multiculturalism see this multiculturalism was not pre uh, prevalent in detective fiction earlier okay you'll have a i mean that it's it's predominantly a, a police procedural story but you'll have a a, a a a homicide detective or a detective who who tries to unravel the mystery and you'll have a gang there you'll have a team there you'll find that one person is from uh, one person is italian one, one one person is spanish one is uh, uh, african american one is uh, chinese so you 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 find a, a, a different cultures mix, mixing up there they will all fight crime so it was considered to be so much multicultural it was so much ahead of its time multicultural it it talked about teamwork and it also talked about uh, the 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 citizens who are very much law abiding so the 87th precinct novels gave a lot of um, new vistas for detective fiction the next uh, slide please 
now as i was telling you about uh, noir fiction okay that is uh, because i uh, talked to you about hard boiled fiction i had to go to noir fiction and uh, just because of hard boiled fiction we have three that is noir fiction and you have uh, gangster and you have anti conspiracy or conspiracy you can call it either way it it goes against conspiracy, conspiracy that's all what is this gangster novels of course you have uh, the greatest novel of all the godfather of mario puzo so it rises out of detective fiction you'll have a gangster okay according to him what he does is right you'll have the family story okay that grew into a different subgenre and this anti conspiracy or conspiracy novels as i told you earlier the assassinations of jfk um, or the assassination of lincoln watergate scandals okay who killed whom or what happened okay the, there the uh, the conspiracy thrillers will have a, a will not have a detective per se will have a, an investigator or a journalist okay investigative journalist or an amateur, amateur investigator who um, find something small but as he unravels one by one as he as he uh, uh, okay peels off one one layer by another you will find that he is going to uh, to unra uh, to uh, unwrap a large conspiracy something in the top that's how stories go right when they start with the small but they end up uh, getting the the biggest person the big fish okay there are lots of examples for conspiracy thrillers uh, one very uh, important example of the earlier stages were uh, john bookens uh, 39 steps the 39 steps which came out in the year i believe it's 1915 and uh, graham green uh, ministry of fear, of fear. see uh, the this conspiracy novels was was uh, so much uh, influential in america in the years of 1960s and 70s because you have this cold war you have this uh, espionage okay uh because it, there was a resignation of nixon uh the assassinations as i told you earlier watergate uh, scandal so it was so much uh, selling like hot cakes that's what i should say now examples of uh, these kind of uh, works are uh, richard condon okay he wrote the the novel the manchurian candidate uh, william rickert illuminatus and uh, thomas pinkin okay thomas pinkin and pinkin has written three novels on this that is one is inherent vice gravity's rainbow and the crying of lord 49 okay and uh, you you have this uh, writer um, i mean umboto eco he has also written uh, this novel the fukol pendulum the fukol pendulum that is also an example of conspiracy why why go for that you might have all known about uh, uh, da vinci code okay by dan brown that is a religious conspiracy thriller you you talk about the the opus day you talk about the roman catholic church the priory of sion everything goes as a conspiracy thriller because he is a, a professor as i told you he is an amateur investigator he is not a professional but from the beginning from the uh, small from the small thing he unravels a mystery which which is in the top okay so there are lots of writers uh, who have written conspiracy thrillers uh, as i told you dan brown joseph heller catch 22 okay uh, margaret atwood james l elroy and uh, we also have robert ludlum the famous jason bone movies jason bone series it, it was it, it is the novel which uh, became a movie uh, the conspiracy against cia okay the operation blackbriar treadstone whatever so this gave rise only from detective fiction now the next slide of course when we talk about detective fiction we cannot forget oh it goes without saying that the best of all the spy fiction will be james bond it was created by ian fleming okay okay ian fleming's james bond see remember we know that these uh, this character okay this character is also equally important when comes to fiction this character was uh, um uh, was popular was popularized by the novels as of earlier but he became very popular the no, the character became very popular because of movies okay so now 
Ian Fleming has written 12 novels and short story collections and two short short story collections on this character alone that is James Bond alone and like Sherlock Holmes many people are writing or uh, taking up the mantle and writing after Ian Fleming for example Casino Royale Live and Let Die Moonraker uh, Diamonds of Forever From Russia with Love Doctor No Goldfinger For Your Eyes Only Thunderball Living Daylights and Octopussy Honor Majesty Secret Service the list goes on okay these these are all novels not uh, movies but these were made into movies also and we we are we were i was awaiting uh, the uh, movie on april 2020 you know what happened so you you understand the 25th movie i was waiting in the 25th movie now you understand that this character is a detective okay on the whole he is a detective uh, a military detective so this gave rise to espionage fiction which means spy fiction the cold war time okay so during the cold war uh, people that is detectives were there in both sides that is the spies were there in this side that is in the in the, in the american side or the british side or or the russian side every country had their own detectives mossad mi5 uh, cia okay they were uh, they, they were working in other countries also so this formed the basis of espionage fiction okay the next slide please now we are moving on to a, a greater realm of uh, detective fiction that is the historical crime fiction okay there are two types of uh, historical crime fiction okay the setting is different i'm getting some interference here i believe someone someone is talking is there someone talking there no i'm just getting some interference right now historical crime fiction why do we call it an historical crime fiction we call it historical crime fiction because of the historical setting okay there are two types of historical crime fiction but first one the first one for example the the given there it is the name of the rose which is set in the 13th century uh, monastery italian monastery the setting itself is historical it was written sometime uh, now that is in the 20th century but uh, umberto eco takes the story and and sets it in a monastery which is in the italian abbey so the setting is 13th century so history so you mix history and crime it becomes historical crime fiction so what does the historical crime fiction have it has an historical setting and it also has very similitude that is you have to be true to the historical setting the detective can only use gadgets and detective can only have the uh, mentality of the historical setting at that time this is one the other historical crime fiction is called trans historical crime fiction for example joseph and tay okay uh, the the very uh, good example of uh, trans historical crime fiction is um, uh, this one um i'm sorry um yeah daughter of time i'm very sorry daughter of time by joseph winte because daughter of time the detective okay he he is in his in his bed that is he is not feeling well he is he is in his uh, bed he is recuperating he is investigating something which happened in the time of uh, king john the princess in the tower you you understand so the setting is different a contemporary detective okay investigating something which happened in the past there are so many examples of that uh, for example um, um caleb car the uh, writer of the alienist has written a sherlock holmes story called the italian secretary where he, sherlock holmes has to investigate what happened in the era of elizabeth okay queen elizabeth or queen mary for that matter before elizabeth it was mary queen of scots uh, there is a uh, italian secretary he is killed off uh, david rizzio okay so what happened to him what happens there what what was the actual story that happens he is the one, he is going he is investigating that so a historical setting but a contemporary historical setting which which investigates something historical so that is why it is called trans historical crime fiction so historical crime fiction there are two uh, types one is historical crime fiction and trans historical crime fiction joseph winte uh, is very uh, famous uh, we in heber have this story for part 2 uh, remember caesar 
okay it's, it's a parody on historical crime fiction okay so you can see detective fiction is like that you can take up anything you can take up anything and you can create a beautiful story out of it see just because he is a detective it is not mandatory for the detective to arrive at a conf- conclusion to solve the mystery no it is not so we live in an era of postmodernism you cannot say that you have to have a closure no you cannot have a closure also okay let's see the next uh, slide please yeah i have told you about uh, uh, the historical crime fiction that is a very contemporary detective uh, but something uh, out of the way investigation of a past crime now next slide we move on to the uh, present age that is we have a lot of uh, thrillers now see when it comes to thrillers they all originate from detective fiction or crime fiction for that matter okay the uh, cyber thrillers that is something connected with uh, uh, computers which we are so much depending nowadays uh, examples there are lots of examples i'm just giving you a uh, layman example of dan brown's origin or uh, daniel zuarez demon okay cyber thrillers we have uh, um, you know uh, uh, the, the 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 artificial intelligence taking taking over i robot is an example of cyber thriller uh you know i robot gives gives way to paves way to a lot of uh, movies okay isaac asimov's uh, novels okay the 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 three laws the, the the robot cannot harm okay who who did the job who who killed okay who was the one who was responsible there so cyber thrillers okay terminator can also be considered a cyber thriller okay ridley scott's uh, blade runner can also be termed as a cyber thriller you have lots of examples for cyber thrillers many movies uh, are, made, are made from this kind of cyber thrillers now um the next slide please yeah eco thrillers see uh, when i when i was telling you about thrillers we have cyber thrillers we have eco thrillers we have legal thrillers we have medical thrillers we have uh, campus thrillers urban legend example of a campus thriller okay so i i cannot we cannot i'm sorry we cannot put detective fiction in a basket okay it is it is very vast as i told you it, it started before time and it will go till the end of time now eco thrillers see eco thrillers are something that goes with relevance to ecology environment uh one good example is nevada bars uh, the track of the cat okay see the the, the eco thrillers look uh, the, the the setting is the detective that is uh, for example in this uh, novel the, the track of the cat okay uh, one person is killed but people think that he was murdered by a lion but it's not so okay who was the one who killed the person because here ecology becomes positive very positive nature becomes very positive nature is not never wrong so eco thrillers have ecology see we know we know about eco criticism by eco criticism eco ecology is 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 true ecology is beauty ecology is 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 the epitome so ecology is 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 omnipresent like that eco thrillers will have the protagonist as the ecology itself okay so this is one and now next slide please now let's move on to a very big uh, topic but uh, as i told you earlier see there are lots of uh, writers see when you talk about uh, detective fiction you can never you can never negate the fact that uh, female writers and female detectives were very influential okay see though it was popularized by arthur conan doyle through sherlock holmes you cannot take away agatha christie or dorothy l slayers or anne green or uh, marjorie allingham okay or niago marsh any of those writers any of those female writers in fact i should not give a separate topic of female writers and female detectives at all because female writers and female detectives have uh, 
helmed the four for so long. But I do not want to leave out uh, lest our uh, friends get angry because female writers were the ones, were the, were the influential ones for this genre to develop. Miss Marple, she is the epitome of armchair direction. Okay, she sits in a chair, but she deduces the fact that this has gone wrong. Not like Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes is a man of action. He has the this iron constitution. He has to go on all fours. He, he has a lot of he has he has to do a lot of leg work. But this lady, okay, mm, you know there is a famous dialogue which says women are uh, born detectives. Okay, see this is positive, not negative. Okay, don't take me wrong. They are born detectives. They should be. I I agree to the fact. And they are good writers of detective fiction also. Female writers, okay. So as you can see, why I'm giving you this uh, picture is that Sherlock Holmes was considered to be, is considered to be the epitome of uh, detective fiction or detective character. But there are writers who have taken Holmes and uh, married him and they have created a beautiful character that is the daughter of Sherlock Holmes. Remember, in the actual stories, Holmes was considered to be a bachelor. Okay. Um, he is a bachelor till his death. And there is no mention of his death also. That is also another loophole, which is taken up by Michael Shaban. Okay. Michael Shaban, an American writer. He wrote this novel, The Final Solution, where we can find that Holmes... He does not give out the name as Holmes, the character's name's name as Holmes. He says that is a, that he is a 90-year-old man who, who lives by beekeeping. We all know that the characteristic traits of the old man resemble that of the Holmes. And um, Ellery Queen has written a lot of... Uh, Ellery Queen is a, is a male writer, okay, though the name seems to be female. He has written a lot of uh, uh, work studies, in fact, where you find that Mrs. Hudson is the one uh, who finds the mystery. Or there are lots of uh, novels where Watson is the one who finds the mystery. How Watson learned the trick. Okay, there is this movie called Without a Clue, where Holmes is just the, uh, just an actor, whereas Watson is the actual mastermind. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that there are lots of permutations. In that, the female writers have used all those permutations. For example, you find that um, uh, Laurie or King, okay, her, her novels uh, called the Beekeeper series, where uh, Mary Russell is a detective. She becomes the protege of Sherlock Holmes. So, however, okay, you find that there are lots of female writers and female detectives. Okay, uh, Remember, um, not just Conan Doyle or um, uh, other writers have taken uh, homes um, throughout the globe. Many people have taken. Okay, for example, I have I know a writer called uh, Rad Chris. His name is Radha Krishnan. He has, uh, um, you know, contracted his name as Rad Chris. He has written one novel called The Adventure of the Black Drop. Okay, remember, I'm, why I'm saying this is that a, a, a contemporary time and a and, and a person who who lives near who, li who lives in Tamil Nadu. So many of those many of those writers can take up the character of Holmes. Female writers are no exception. Okay. See, from the beginning, detective fiction has been has, has been growing because, because of female writers and female detectives. Okay. Uh, next slide. Now, moving on to the postmodern era. As I told you earlier, this postmodern era, we, we, we cannot see uh, a closure. See, a policeman should be strong. I mean, a hero should be strong. Okay. A hero should be well-groomed. But the concept of hero shatters when it comes to postmodernism. Jeffrey Deaver, he has written uh, the series called the Bone Collector series. That is Lincoln Rhyme series. One novel is Bone Collector where you find that the detective is a, is a cripple. I should not use that word, but he, he is a quadriplegic. That is, his, only his head works and his finger works. That's all. But he has resources near him. 
and he has the help of Amelia Sachs. Amelia Sachs is another lady who acts as his eyes, but she is a detective in her own uh, right. Okay, so remember, you you break away conventions. The detective here is a challenged detect de detective. That is, uh, he is not physically able to perform the task of a detective, but he can mentally perform the task of a detective. Jeffrey Deaver is very famous, the Blue Nowhere, um, or now here, uh, the the Devil's Tear Drop. Okay, and he has written a, a, I mean, written a very beautiful a James Bond novel also, Carte Blanche, which means which means complete freedom. Okay, so you, you, you see that this writer has 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 dabbled something new. The concept of the challenged detective. Okay, someone who is physically not capable of performing the task, but he is a detective. So it, 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 it moves the detective to a, to a psychological level, the next level. Detective is not a, a, a physical thing, but a psychological thing. Okay, now, next slide. Now, uh, see, I have not given lots of insights on detective fiction because I cannot. Uh, time will not permit me to talk about every detective. But I cannot leave our detectives also. Tamil detectives, Tamil detective writers, Rajesh Kumar. Okay. And that is why, that is why we come into uh, ethnic detectives. India, we have an Indian Sherlock Holmes, that is Byomkesh, Byomkesh Bakshi. It was made into a movie. It was made into TV serials. Okay. It was very popular. He serves as a kind of an Indian Sherlock Holmes. Okay. And you have... Uh, the writers in Bengali taking up uh, a lot of uh, fiction on detectives. Okay, these can be called as ethnic detectives. See, every country, as I told you earlier, every country country will have its own detective characters. For example, Judge D in China. Um, okay, so and you have the Arabian character Jaffa, and our detective. Okay, next slide, please. Just just giving you an overview of how. Uh, our detectives are there. Okay, Tamil detectives are there. Okay, one uh, very good example is uh, is Mishkin's Tupperivalan. Though it is on the whole, is he he's modeled on Sherlock Holmes. Mishkin, uh, Mr. Mishkin acknowledges the fact. You see the impact on culture because of the detective. As I told you, I keep going back to Sherlock Holmes because you can take away. Detective fiction, okay. You can you can take away uh, Holmes from detective fiction, okay. You okay. You cannot have that character there, okay. In your in the story which you write, but you cannot take away the detective fiction when it comes to the character, okay. You'll you'll find that uh, there will there is a, a slight impact. There is a subtle impact of the character. See, if you model. Uh, your your character. If you are writing a story, and if you model your detecting on on Sherlock Holmes, then you are taking the character. Okay, one. If you are not modeling on Sherlock Holmes, then also you are keeping the character in mind. There is a template there, so you cannot negate him. However, for example, you have the character of Kanyan Pungundran in Tupperivalan. Okay, we shall act that right. The tall. The, the one who is wearing a cap and look at the the place okay we'll, it will be lodged with books having green tea because you cannot show uh, the actors smoking nowadays so green tea papers the way he investigates you you, you understand so all these okay keep keep these things in the back of the mind because character in a of a detective story becomes the story in itself okay more centered on the character also okay so what i'm trying to say is that we have a lot of ethnic detectives okay next slide please now let's get to the um, the present um, area now the present condition is there will be no mystery at all just mashup okay See, there will be the metaphysical, the modern, the postmodern, the anti-detective. 
what is the meaning of anti detective see something which goes against the grain is called anti that is against okay here you will have a detective who is a complete idiot you will have a story where there will be no crime at all okay see uh, examples of uh, these anti detective stories are polished as the new new york trilogy the city of glass ghosts the locked room see this locked room becomes a, a very important feature in a detective, detective story locked room mystery is always uh, very fascinating the room will be locked from inside someone comes and murders me now see the room is locked from the inside okay people are outside but nobody can come in but what if i get killed okay and how it happened so gets you thinking right so the locked room mystery was considered to be the greatest but all these uh, are a trivial to the postmodern detective he is considered to be the metaphysical the anti detective okay so there will be no mystery at all just mash up it will be a mash up of all the genres there is one story but it did not come in the present times it came uh, earlier elery queen okay homes okay sherlock homes he goes to heaven and uh, god is there and god uh, says oh homes you have come here fine we have a problem what is that we could not find adam this guy keeps slipping away and we cannot he, he he disguises himself we cannot find him okay so what can we do we have the greatest detective here we let him find it you know home says okay he keep he wants all the people in the heaven to stand in a line and he goes and grabs adam you know how it will be very simple adam does not have a navel because he was not born of a woman right he was made so he does not have a navel so see remember trivial it it will be a mash up sherlock holmes will meet shakespeare he'll meet uh, jack the ripper he'll meet uh, sigmund freud okay he'll meet anybody not just holmes i'm just giving you an example through holmes okay in the detective will meet meet up with anybody okay there will be no mystery no closure no story just a mash up of things it is like watching uh, what is that a parody movie and parodies mind you are very very important when it comes to post modern era we live in a post modern we live in an, we live in a era of parody without parodies adaptations reinterpretations reworkings nothing is possible every story has been told earlier so parodies are very important parodies you know they they spice things up okay next slide please now i'm just giving you examples of others uh, that is other genres of other ways detective fictions have been uh, fiction has been uh, branched there are uh, detective fiction in anime that is animation comics okay batman becomes the detective there uh, just an example okay and uh, homes and watson spoof that is parody there are lots of movies with uh, uh, showing homes as the idiot and watson as the um a greater intellect or uh, he he fails in his plan something like that not just him lots of uh, detectives are spoofed okay next slide and in popular culture we cannot negate the fact that uh, popular culture has a lot of detective stories for example the mentalist the luther okay csi crime investigation okay um all these characters look at mentalist for example patrick jane uh, is considered to be the mentalist but he is psychologically powerful that's all he is not a mental he is not a psych psychic okay he manipulates he is a master manipulator luther and you have uh, the I, i mean you have the um, um ethnic uh, or the or the multicultural uh, group csi and mentalist also has a group all these people all these uh, popular pop culture uh, uh, settings will have the multiculturalism in that okay uh, next slide please the important of all when it comes to detective fiction there are two things one is obviously sherlock uh, benedict cumberbatch and martin freeman they have done a very good job remember earlier jeremy brett of the grandanda television was considered to be the definitive homes he was the epitome of homes okay uh, i keep using the word epitome because i don't know what how else to put it because he was considered to be the best best of homes he brought the character to life 
okay and he lived and died as homes as i i should should say uh, after that uh, we liked uh, robert downey junior uh, in sherlock holmes but benedict cumberbatch the the contemporary sherlock is considered to be definitive and elementary is 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 some somewhat different he is an american sherlock holmes he is a british man but he lives in america where you find that watson there is a woman joan watson or jane watson i'm sorry i'm not very sure <laughs> okay but the watson character there that is the biographer there is a woman so pop culture gives you a lot of insight as to how this genre has evolved many people don't read the novels at all please do read the novels watch the pop culture items also don't just watch pop culture items and say that you know about detective fiction no please don't do that read at least some okay uh, it will be very interesting you can finish the book in one sitting because detective fiction will will give you clues as to what happens next so it will be like watching a movie simple as that okay so pop culture references now what makes this okay the the traits of the uh, detective so um, i mean so important because they are very very quirky okay they are different they are not like us they are bohemian and what is that 444 pounds 4 pe- shillings and 4 pence is that the amount the detective has i mean it's it's one just one detective okay the uh, the detective will have always have the uh, the amount of this much okay not every detective just one detective i believe it's hercule poirot okay so that is his eccentricity 444 4 shillings 4 pence not a nano uh, pence more so why i am giving you this this is this i am telling you that they are very very quirky they are different they are eccentric they are bohemian but for them finding something becomes their job homes for example homes this says that work is the antidote for best antidote for sorrow without work his brain rots and he says that his mind is like a racing engine okay if it is not connected to the machine which which it it should it should be it tears itself to pieces okay so you understand their mind works in a different way okay so this is taken by by the by by a lots of uh, creative writers uh, that is why you, when you when, when uh, there is a stereotype of detective uh, i mean character when it when it when he or she appears on the movie he'll be wearing a cap, cap uh, uh, coolers uh, dressing will be different okay just to show his uh, his or her quirkiness you can create without using that also you understand so the traits of the detective are always to some extent which we have seen will be different okay that is why i have put this slide as tech traits tech traits the tech is a detective okay quirky bohemian okay you can call it whatever you want you can call it brilliant you can call it call it idiotic also but they get the job done okay next slide now just some add ons as to uh, next slide please next slide not the text traits it's add ons okay add ons uh, that is these are the add ons these are the terms which uh, we have in de- uh, detective fiction who done it it's it's the uh, um, short form of who had done it okay who was the one who committed the crime an investigation will always take you to it why done it why did the person did this crime how catch him how do you catch them how do you catch the person see this how catch him was was a uh, was a greater trait when it comes to hard boiled detective fiction because you know who is the person who committed the crime because it is organized crime but how to catch them okay that is the question there cliffhanger you know what is a cliffhanger story right something they leave uh, hanging okay cliffhanger story locked room mystery i have told you about locked room mystery earlier so these are just add ons or terms which we can uh, relate ourselves to detective fiction okay so on the whole uh, when you think of detective fiction okay this genre has grown by leaps and bounds 
it started earlier but we did not know that this is called detective fiction earlier but it it started with 17th century it started with uh, 18 it 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 became greater in 18th and 19th century and now this is a genre or this is the genre of the novel which uh, is so much uh, selling okay which 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 is a very best seller for, of these times okay and when you look at the storyline also there are certain places which uh, take your breath away okay so don't look at detective fiction okay okay just because uh, i'm not saying that uh, this because uh, this is my topic no don't take up detective fiction as only pulp fiction no look at it in a different way it is literature see as i told you before when you when you can take up songs as literature when you take up um, pop songs as literature when you can get nobel prize for pop songs i'm not saying that is bad that is good we live in, a, in an era of postmodernism why not take up detective fiction as literature not not as pulp literature but mainstream literature there are lots of things to explore when it comes to detective fiction you have i have given you an overview or a sweeping overview of all the sub genres which we have in detective fiction if you take up one you will you yourself will find the other okay so now i must thank you for uh, patiently listening to me that is the end of my uh, presentation that is the end of my slide also uh, there are uh, i must tell you that i have not done justice for detective fiction here because i cannot i cannot okay um talk to you about detective fiction for one hour and call it uh, an uh, a lecture on detective fiction no there are lots of things to uh, unravel in a detective fiction as 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 i should put it so i'd be happy if i have opened enlightened a, a few ideas into your mind so that you go and check it for yourself so that you go and search it for yourself i'd be very much happy okay uh, thank you all for patiently listening thank you thank you thank you so much uh, dr suresh kumar it was uh, much enlightening i was thank watching you. through a complete uh, i was not in the subject actually but i was watching like a complete english uh, movie kind of a thing so on uh, your uh, your experience sharing of your uh, experience and it shows your uh, how much experience and how much research you have uh, done on this uh, field uh, so thank you so much for your uh, uh you're sharing your uh, knowledge and expertise i think participants in the youtube uh, live also thoroughly uh, they've enjoyed and uh, i request uh, dr ritya kumar uh, to proceed with the vote of thanks and the closing session and the participants i'll be sharing the feedback form in, in the meantime thank you for the introduction sir good afternoon to all i feel honored and privileged to propose vote of thanks on this special occasion let me first of all start by giving glory to the almighty for making today's occasion of silver jubilee national webinar on detective fiction and overview i am extremely grateful to our honorable founder and chairman thiru lion b munirathnam sir for his valuable guidance and his encouraging words i convey heartfelt thanks to our honorable secretary thiru lion engineer m ramanan former member syndicate Thiruvallur University, Vello, for his encouragement and motivation in all our endeavors. I wish to thank our respected principal, Dr. S. Maidali Madam, for her constant encouragement and support, and she has always been the source of inspiration for our academic activities and success. On behalf of our management, on my own behalf, I convey my regards and hearty thanks to our distinguished speaker. Dr. P. Suresh Kumar, Assistant Professor of English, Bishop Eber College, Tiruchi, for his enlightening and thought-provoking lecture on detective fiction. Uh, I hope that it will be very useful for our students to spend their time, to kill their time to read the uh, detective novels. It will be very interesting for the students. I extend my sincere thanks to our respected uh, Vice Principal. and head of the department of english ms k sugana madam member academic council thiruvalluvar university for her guidance and motivation throughout the endeavor 
I should thank uh, Mr. Dinesh Gajendran for his technical support. Thank you, sir. I express our sincere gratitude to all the participants who have made this webinar a grand success. Finally, I would like to thank our teaching and non-teaching staff members for their active participation. Once again, I thank you one and all. Dear participants, it is our request kindly fill the feedback form and send it to us as soon as possible. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And thank Can you so much. A few sir. words, please. Yes, ma'am, please. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Mr. Suresh. Suresh, thank you for taking so much of pain and your effort for presenting this. And I hope, thank as you, Dinesh man. has said, that all the participants must be now interested to watch more detective novels and fictions and reading fictions as such. Once again, I thank my management and our beloved principal for giving us such an opportunity. And I thank Dinesh for taking so much of pains. And as our, our principal has said, you have been with us from past one month. And I hope this program will continue on. Thank you, Dinesh. Yeah, and my you. special thanks to my colleagues, Professor Selvakumar, Professor Radhika, Professor Prakash, and special thanks to Mansur for being with me to organize this program. Thanks to all my participants. And I request my participants to forward the feedback, which will be an encouragement to us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dinesh. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, all the, all the Excuse participants. Excuse me, sir. Uh, Dinesh, sir. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, just, yes. Just, just one word, sir. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, please, please. Wait. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Sugana, ma'am, and uh, uh, Manzur, sir, for, uh, for giving me this opportunity. And especially, I would like to thank Dinesh, sir, you, because I am very much bad in technology. <laughs> thank you for helping me out. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Yeah, participants, I'm just, uh, I've just already posted the feedback form in the chat box and the comment box. So you can just take your time to fill it out. I'm just closing the live session now. You can just take the feedback forms in the comment box also if you missed. missed. Thank you so much. And all the best, best wishes.